open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Luke at chapter number 2. Commencing in verse number 8. The Gospel record of Luke at chapter 2. Commencing in verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Goodwill toward men. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want again to lift another anthem, another song of the season that we sing often, but I want us to pay particular attention to the deep theology in the song, Hark, the Herald Angels Sing. Hark, listen, listen, the Herald Angels are singing. They're still singing. Hark, listen. Tune out. The world's messages. Tune out the commercialism of this season and hear the angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. That's that's sound theology. Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold, he come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Hail incarnate deity. Pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Hail the heaven-born prince of peace. Hail the son of righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that men no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Perhaps no other story in the Bible speaks with such clarity about the power and the purpose of God. Just the fact that God stepped out of eternity into time is mind-boggling. 
it boggles the mind that shepherds, lowly, undeserving, dirt people, were the first to listen to the greatest story ever told. It boggles the mind that angels are amazed that the creator was born in the image of the creature. It boggles the mind that Jesus laid aside certain attributes of his divine person that he might come here to die in my place. And over 2,000 years later, we are called back to the words of the angels who visited the shepherds on that Judean hillside that night. And in those words, we find the true glory of Christmas. Because no matter what we make of it, Christmas will always be about a baby born in a manger. That night when in Judean skies, the mystic star dispensed its light. A blind man moved in sleep and dreamed that he had sight. That night when all the manger lay, the sanctified who came to save, a man moved in the sleep of death and dreamed that there was no grave. Because of the birth of this child, because of who Jesus is, according to this text, we have three things that we would not have had had he not been born. Our text words are in verse number 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. In this one verse, all of our hopes rest. In this one verse, if we could ever get verse number 11, we could shout for the rest of our lives. If we could ever grasp and wrap our minds around what God has done for us in just one verse, we would leave this place happy for the rest of our days. For unto us is born this day, whatever day you find him, He's born that day in you, a Savior who is Christ, the Lord. He was born in me one Wednesday. Somebody found him one Sunday morning. It doesn't matter what day it was. It doesn't matter what hour it was. If you found Jesus, he's a Savior. He's Christ. And he is Lord. Let's, let's look for a, moment, for a moment at this title, Savior. What does it mean for us that Christ is our Savior? As Savior, he brings us acceptance. This child's mission was to save not just the wealthy, not just the righteous, but the poor and the unrighteous. He came to set the captives free. He came to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He came for those that no one else wanted. And it's significant that the first ones to hear the news were lowly, dirt people. Shepherds were not even allowed in the temple precincts because they carried with them a filth and a stench that could only be kept on the outside of the temple precincts. But God would not give the first news to Herod the king. But God sent an angel to announce to lowly dirt people that under you is born this day in the city of David a savior. And that savior brings us acceptance. Uh, he, he, he made us 
accepted. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Yeah. Yeah. Those of us who read the Bible will know that we were aliens and strangers. I wish I had two or three Bible readings. We were cut off uh, from the covenants of promise. We were strangers of the commonwealth of Israel, but the middle wall of petition has been brought low and God who at one time could not accept us because of our sin problem, because of Jesus Christ who came to save us, we are now accepted in the beloved. There was a time he couldn't accept us because we were lost and without hope. But then Christ came and became for us a propitiation. Somebody ought to help me preach it. He became expiation. He took our sins away. He saved us from our sin. And maybe the reason you can't shout this morning is because you think you're not that sinful. You think you're pretty good because you haven't raped anybody or, or you haven't cussed anybody out last week or you haven't been drunk or you haven't stolen anything. So you think you're pretty good. But just the fact that you were born makes you a sinner. Just the fact that you came into this world, God could not accept you born first. You had to be born twice. Because that which is of the flesh is flesh. How dare you sit in this church and think you're pretty good. Every time I walk in this house, I wish I had a witness here. Every time I walk in this house, I leave my ego in the car. I leave my self-importance outside. Because when I come in this house, it's like no other house. Because in this house, I recognize he didn't have to let me get up. And the mere fact that he lets me come into his presence means that I am accepted in the beloved. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. They might not let you in the Delta sorority. But I've been accepted. I wish I had a witness here. They, they, they might not accept you at State Farm or Farmers Insurance. But I've been accepted in the beloved. They might not accept you in Austin at the governor's mansion or in Washington at the White House, but I've been accepted. Uh, growing up, growing up in my little town where I'm from, there were certain sections of town that we were not accepted. There were certain stores, doctor's offices, where we were not accepted. Dr. Sylvan Manuel, I can talk about him now because he's dead. Uh, Dr. Sylvan Manuel was my mother's doctor. And uh, until 1981, Sylvan Manuel had a, an office in Eunice with a partition Blacks on one side and whites on the other side. And he was my mother's doctor. And my mother had a lot of nerve. Uh, my, my mother would go to the doctor's appointment and sit purposely uh, on the side reserved for whites. And they would see her right away. Good morning, Ms. Anderson. Come on in. Not because they were glad to see her, but they wanted to get her out of that section. 
because there were places where we were not accepted. And the Liberty Theater in Eunice, we'd go to the show. That's what they used to call it back then in the 70s and the 60s. Uh, it's the movies now, but we used to go to the show uh, at the Liberty Theater and we had to sit upstairs. And, 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 and when I think about it, there were better seats upstairs. But the fact that I had to sit there made me know that I was not accepted. But in Christ, it doesn't matter what your skin color, doesn't matter what your educational level, does not matter what your financial condition, doesn't matter how many sins you committed, we are accepted in the beloved. Because Jesus is our Savior. The title Savior brings with it acceptance. But not only is he Savior, but unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ. That title Savior brings with it acceptance. But that title Christ brings with it access. This child comes to do more than provide salvation. He came to allow us access into, into the very presence of Almighty God himself. Yeah. 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 Through Jesus, I said through Jesus, we can approach the unapproachable. God in the Old Testament is the unapproachable one. Some of us who read the Bible will remember in the Old Testament, uh, a mediator uh, had to come and talk to God for the people because God was unapproachable. I need two or three witnesses here. The children of Israel told Moses, we want to talk to God ourselves. We want to tell God something ourselves. God said, bring him up to Mount Sinai. I wish I had a Bible reader. And when they got to the foot of Mount Sinai, it started trembling. and The voice of God started rumbling. And there was fire and smoke. And they told Moses, tell God, we'll listen to you. Because the voice of God is unapproachable. The, the presence of God is is un, he's the unapproachable one. But in Christ, we have access. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. John chapter 16 verse 23 says, whatever you ask in my name, I wish I had a witness here, I will give it to you. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 says, therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he ever lives to make intercession for us. We have access. Somebody ought to help me shout right here. I, I can't just bust up at the White House when I feel like it. Uh, somebody got to bring me in to see President Obama. Well, I'm glad I got somebody who can bring me in whenever I get ready to talk to my father. He's unapproachable unless I approach him through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came not only to save us and to bring us acceptance, but he came to give us access. Come boldly. Make your requests known. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation 
to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Come boldly. Make your request known. Never be ashamed to pray. Never be ashamed to tell God what you need because he's approachable now. Have I got a witness here? Never be embarrassed to come and kneel down in God's presence because he's approachable now. You can approach him who was once unapproachable. In my family, I was terrified of my father. It was not until I got to be an older teenager and, and then a grown man that I relaxed around my father. But my father had a strong voice, big hands, and, and I was terrified of him. He, he never did anything to make me afraid of him. I was just afraid of his authority. I was afraid of his power. I was afraid of his voice. When he said my name, looked like the house shook. <laughs> uh, we could play with my mother, but my father didn't play. Uh, my, my father was stern. He loved us because he went to work every day. Uh, he loved us because he protected us. He would kill a dead oak tree for one of his children. He, he, he provided for us. But I was just terrified of him. When he come in the house and call my name, Terry. And I would just tremble all in my shoe. I was terrified of my father. But Johnny could get away with anything. Johnny was the baby in our family. And whenever we wanted something from my daddy, we sent in our mediator. Somebody help me get where I'm trying to go. I was afraid of him, but I wanted a quarter. Because with a quarter, you could buy five moon cookies. Four Mary Janes. I wish I had a witness. A long boy. And some red soda water. But I needed a mediator. And Johnny, who was the apple of my father's eye, could go in and ask for anything, but my father would not just give Johnny what he asked for. He gave it to all of us, but we needed a mediator. Somebody ought to help me get where I'm trying to go. Now, he would have given it to me had I asked, but for me, he was unapproachable. So I needed somebody who could go in that he had a tender heart for. God has a tender heart for Jesus Christ. And when I need something, all I've got to do is go to the one that the Father has a tender heart for. And through him, I gain access. Come boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace. That you may obtain mercy and grace to help you in the time of need. Not only is he our Savior. And through his title, Savior, we have acceptance. Not only is he our Christ, and through that title, Christ, we have access. But unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That word Lord means authority. He has authority. He has unbridled authority. Walk with me through the text. He has the authority of God the Father over sickness. Over disease. Over storms. Over demonic spirits. There's nothing 
in this world that can overwhelm me if I walk in his authority. Somebody ought to help me preach it. They were at a wedding feast in Cana of Galilee and they had run out of wine. And his mother came to him and said, they've run out of wine. And he said, what have I to do with that? And she told the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And he told them to go get six water pots and fill them with water. And between the dipping and the sipping, it becomes extraordinary wine. Because he has authority over something as simple as the chemical elements of water. He can take H2O and turn it into such a fine wine that the governor of the feast says, you save the best wine for last. He has all authority. They were out in the desert place. And there was nowhere to buy any bread. But there was a boy with two fish and five barley loaves. And Jesus said, bring it to me. And they put it in his hands and he lifted it up to his father. And when he brought it down, he started handing it out to his disciples and his disciples to the people. And they fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. He has all authority. Jairus' daughter was at the point of death. Jairus said to him, Lord, if you come and lay your hands on her, she will be healed and she will live. And the scripture says Jesus went with him. But on the way, it just happened on the way. And there are some things with God that just happen when he's on the way. If you just get in the way, when he's on the way, wonderful things can happen in your life. Now, he was on the way to wake up Jairus' daughter, but on the way, there was a woman with an issue of blood. I wish I had a Bible reading. She'd suffered 12 long years, spent everything she had, and instead of getting better, she got worse. But she heard that Jesus was on the way to Jairus' house. And she knew she wouldn't be able to stand up to talk to him because the crowd was pressing him. So she just grabbed his clothes. And when she touched him, I wish I had somebody to help me shout. When Jesus stopped, the blood stopped. Jesus said, wait a minute, somebody touched me. Peter said, I'm sure it was Peter. Peter said, Lord, all these people here, somebody's bound to bump into you. Jesus said, I didn't say nobody bumped into me. Somebody touched me. Because when they touched, it was a touch of faith. Because I felt power. I felt virtue run out of me and this morning if you just grab him if you reach out and touch him in faith the same power he sent in that woman he'll send in your heart right now somebody touched me and that little woman stood up and Jesus got her theology straight there is no healing in this garment. This garment just happens to be on a healer. Go your way. Here it is. Your faith, I wish I had a witness, has made you whole. He has all authority. Lazarus had been dead four days. I wish I had a witness here. And Mary and Martha had sent him word that the one you love is sick. And he delayed coming. And when he finally got there, he said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, show me where you buried him. Martha said, Lord, he's stinking now. 
Jesus said, you're going to see him again. Martha said, I know I'm going to see him in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus got her theology straight. He said, I am. Have I got a witness? The resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. And he that lives and believes in me shall never die. He went to Lazarus' grave. Called him by his name. Lazarus came forth like he had never died. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. He has all authority. One Friday on a cross, they stretched him wide. They hung him high. Nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. He died on the cross. They buried him in a borrowed grave. But bright early Sunday morning, he got up with all authority, all power in his hand. I got one more witness. I got one more witness. I got one more witness that I want to prove to you through that one more witness that he has all authority. I was in the hospital. Sick unto death. And the doctors told my family he won't live two hours. That was over two years ago. Here I am in Lily Grove's pulpit testifying that he has authority over what the doctor said at MD Anderson Hospital. If you sick this morning, if you're broke this morning, if you are lost this morning, he has all authority. Hark! The herald angels sing. Glory! Glory! Glory to the newborn king. As Savior, he's worthy of our worship. You're going to help me close this, won't you? I said as Savior, he's worthy of our worship. As Christ, he's worthy of our dependence. As Lord, he's worthy of our obedience. But I don't go through all of that. Because when you've been through enough, you, you don't go through all them titles and, and you don't go through all of the theological machinations of what makes him who he is. When you've been through enough, you just call him Jesus. Jesus. The Son of God without sin. Jesus. You ever had to call that name? Anybody here late in the midnight hour? Ever had to call that name? Anybody here had tears in your eyes and looked like you'd never smile again? But then you started calling on that name and he gave you a new walk. He gave you a new determination. That's something about that name. I wish I had somebody to help me close here. That's a sweet name. Jesus in the morning. Jesus at noonday. Jesus in the midnight hour. I wish I had somebody to help me call that name. I wish I had somebody who knows that that name can soothe your sorrow. That name can dry your tears. That name opens doors that's been closed in your face. You remember in the old church, before we had all this stained glass, and before we had all of these padded pews, all that old preacher had to do was call the name Jesus. And our old grandmothers and grandfathers would get excited about the name Jesus. 
but not a choir got to sing three songs and the preacher got to say slap five people and run around the building two times before somebody gets excited about the name Jesus but I'm glad this morning that there's about a hundred of us in here who don't need a whole lot of prodding we don't need a whole lot of pumping we don't need nobody to pump up the volume we don't need nobody to raise the roof on the place when we think about what he's done for us is there anybody here no you wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for jesus if the lord opened doors for you help me praise his name if the lord been good to you help me magnify his name if the lord made a way for you help me great glorify his name he's worthy i said he's worthy he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same he's worthy to be praised has he ever opened a door for you then praise his name has he ever answered a prayer for you praise his name has he ever healed your body praise his name has he ever been company in your lonely hour praise his name why don't you grab somebody why don't you hug somebody tell them there is a name there is a name there is a name I know he's all right. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. And the joy, the joy. Do you have joy? Do you have real joy? I'm not talking about money now. Because that can't bring you joy. But Jesus can bring you real joy. Have you tried him? Do you know him for yourself? Why don't you tell your neighbor, you don't know, like I know, you can't tell it, like I can tell it. There's a story behind my praise. There's a reason why I shout so much. There's a reason why I pray so loud. There's a reason why I clap my hand. He brought me. He saved me. He kept me. I know he's all right. on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconcile hark the herald angels say glory to the newborn king Christ the highest heaven adored Christ the everlasting Lord. Our brothers and sisters, he was born in Bethlehem. He came as a savior to bring us acceptance. He came as Christ to bring us access. And he comes as Lord to give even us authority. 
We have authority. We have authority. We don't have all power, but we do have authority to walk in faith, to walk in his love, to walk in his boldness, to walk in the light as he is in the light. For in him, there's no darkness at all. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power, authority to become the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he comes, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is.